In our video today, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. Really quickly before we dive into implicit differentiation, I want to just take a quick look at derivatives and what we've been doing with the functions that we've learned about so far. So when we have a function such as, you know, something really simple like y equals x squared, when we want to find the derivative, let's say we want to say we want to find the derivative. What we're doing when we find the derivative, it's similar to what we're doing anytime we solve an equation or usually anything that we do when we're dealing with an equation, is that we take the derivative of both sides. And so I'm using this d dx notation because that's telling us to perform an action. That's telling us to take the derivative and I want to find the derivative of both sides. When I'm finding the derivative, I'm finding the derivative of both sides of our equation. So when we find the derivative of you know, the right side of the equation, our part with our 2x, or x squared, I got a little ahead of myself there, we get 2x. That's just using the product rule that we're used to. And when we take the derivative of the left side, that's where we get dy dx, or we have that other notation, you know, we can have y prime, or we can have f prime of x. These three notations that we have here, dy dx, y prime, f prime, they all mean that we have the derivative, that that's the derivative of y. So let's keep that in mind when we move to implicit differentiation and that idea of that when we're taking the derivative of an equation or a function like we have here, we're taking the derivative of both sides. That's always what we're doing. And when we have the derivative of y, we write dy dx. And, you know, sometimes we write y prime, but here we're going to write dy dx. So now let's take a look at this kind of a different kind of example. And let's look at the function x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And I've got a picture of it right over here. It is the unit circle. It's a circle with radius 1 and its center at 0, 0. So, you know, a couple of things about this equation. Number one, it's not a function, right? Fails the vertical line test, but it is still a relation and it's a relationship between x and y. And our graph has slope, right? At these different points on our graph, there are different slopes that we have. We can find tangent lines. So we can say that we have slope to our graph and we have tangent lines. So let's you know, because we have slope on this graph and because there are tangent lines, that means we should be able to find the derivative of this. So how do we do that? It's not what we're used to seeing. Usually we have an equation where it's y equals a bunch of stuff that we've done to x. Well, we could, I suppose, if we wanted to, take this equation here and we could solve it for x. I don't know if it's going to turn out to anything nice. Probably not. Otherwise, we wouldn't be looking at this, right? So when we do solve it for y, we get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And, you know, we're getting two equations. We get that positive square root of 1 minus x squared, and that's the top half of this circle. And then we get the negative square root of 1 minus x squared, and that's the bottom half of this circle. So if we wanted to find the derivative at certain points, we'd have to realize, OK, are we talking about a point that's on the top half of the circle, on the bottom half of the circle? And then you know, we have to use the chain rule to get the derivative. You know, We totally can. We can take the derivative of something like square root of 1 minus x squared. It's not you know, terribly difficult if we just were looking at the top half our derivative would end up being, what's that? It's 1 half, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times negative 2x. Sorry if I went a little fast there. I'm trying to get to the, to the real good stuff here. And simplified, you know, it looks like that. Oops, I lost my negative there. We still do have a negative there. So we get negative x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. But, you know, what I would like would be to have an equation because... Again, this is only for the top half. 
I'd like to have some sort of an equation that I could use for this entire circle. So I wouldn't have to split it up between the top half and the bottom half. So, all right, you know, what can we do there? And also we can sometimes end up with functions where we can't do this process, where we can't solve them for y. You know, we could have something like x plus y is equal to sine of y. So here's just another example that I kind of made up here. But this one, if I wanted to find the derivative of this, I can't solve this for y. I would end up kind of putting myself around and around in a circle if I tried to solve for y, because I'd have to do inverse sine of both sides, and then my x plus y would be inside of that inverse sine. And so we have no way of getting y all by itself. So we couldn't even do this kind of process like we could with the circle. So the question is, what can we do with these kinds of functions? Well. I said the word functions there. They're not functions, they're relations. Um, so what can we do with these? Well, what we can do is we can differentiate them implicitly. So we're gonna do something called implicit differentiation. And so what this is gonna do is we are still going to treat x as the independent variable and y as our dependent variable. And that's how we treat things in a function, right? We get to pick our values for x, we plug those into our function, and then what we get out for y depends on what we pick for x. So we're going to do that here still. We're going to act like we have something that is a function and that x is our independent variable and y is our dependent variable, and we're going to take the derivative. So let's grab a different color here. So if we've got our circle and we want to differentiate this, so let's differentiate. And we're going to take the derivative of both sides, just like we did up above on our y equals x squared. So taking the derivative of both sides, when we do that here on our left-hand side, because we have two things added together, we can split that up as the derivative of each piece. And we'll deal with the right-hand side here in just a second. That side's easy, that we can do. So about two thirds of this problem is pretty easy for us to do, right? We know what to do with this. You know, remember that ddx, that's telling us to take the derivative of what's inside of our brackets. Well, we can do that. The derivative of what's inside of our bracket is 2x. Keep that kind of underlined there in the same color. I'm gonna write my plus and my equal sign because we also know exactly what to do with this part on the right hand side. This is asking us to take the derivative of a constant term one. Well, we know that's zero. We've done that a ton of times. So what we have to think about a little bit more is this middle guy here where we're asked to take the derivative of y squared. Well, back up here, I'm gonna go slow, not to make you seasick there. When we did the derivative of y, we got just dy dx. Well, here we are a little bit more complicated because we don't have just plain old y, we have y squared. And we have to remember that y is our dependent variable, so that's telling us that y is a function of x. So y is some sort of function of x, so we've got some equation there, some expression that we're squaring. So to take the derivative, of this part right here, we need to use the chain rule. So we need to take the derivative of our exponent. So we bring our exponent down in front, leave what's inside alone, and maybe this first time that we're doing this, we'll put a little exponent of one there to remind us that what we're doing right there is using the power rule. And then times the derivative of the inside function, which is y. So maybe we'll over here on the side, we will write that y squared here, that that squared is our outside function, and the y is our inside function, 
and we need to use the chain rule to get the derivative of y squared. So we have to take the derivative of our squared part first. That's where that 2y to the first comes in. And then the second part is that we have the derivative of the inside, which is y, and the derivative of y is dy dx. So I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit because I don't like having that one variable or exponent on that y because then it makes it look like it's a y prime, and it's not. So here is the derivative that we got. Now what we like is we like our derivative to be solved for dy dx. That's what we like to have happen because then that looks what we're sort of used to seeing in terms of the derivative. We have the derivative, we took it, it's done, we did it right there, but we wanna make this look a little nicer. So we need to solve for dy dx. That's pretty straightforward here. We're going to rewrite this really quickly so I can show all of my steps. And we're gonna subtract 2x from both sides. So we get 2y times that dy dx, which is what we're trying to get all alone. And that's equal to negative 2x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2y. And we're going to get that dy dx is equal to negative x over y. So that's our derivative of our circle. So we got an implicit function as our derivative, which is totally fine. But remember, we started here. And also, remember, we got that our derivative up here for the top half was this guy right here, that it was negative x over the square root of one minus x squared. Well, if you remember that y is plus or minus the square root of one minus x squared, that is actually also what we got here. That if we wanted to get everything in terms of x instead of x and y, we could have taken the top half of that circle and plug that in for y, and then this is the derivative of the top half. If we want the derivative of the whole thing, this is equal to negative x over plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So you still get that kind of weird, kind of not a function thing with the plus or minus square root, so we don't usually ever write it this way, where we solve it all for for or write it all in terms of x. We don't we don't usually do that. I was doing it just here to kind of kind of prove a point for us that when we use treated this like it was a function and just looked at the top half, we're getting the same thing that we get when we do this implicit differentiation. So there's our solution, and maybe we'll write it down here really quick that our derivative of x squared plus y squared equals one is dy dx equals negative x over y. We'll do in the next video a couple more examples of this just so we can get practice this a little more.